So a few years ago, my daughter Caroline and I, I'm sitting here in her lab here at Harvard, we're over at the New England Aquarium where you can take a look at stingrays. They're swimming around this little pool and you can hold your hand in the water and the stingray will come by and you, you can feel it. So my daughter was leaning into the water to touch a stingray that was coming at her. At the last moment, with just a little flick, it just moved in a completely different direction. So what we decided to do was to reverse engineer the stingray to do a complete breakdown with our marine biomechanician collaborators of the muscle and how it's built inside the stingray and to build our own version of the stingray and to test our tissue engineering by looking at the hydrodynamics of how our stingray swam versus real stingrays. And we needed to activate the stingray so we talked to our friends in optogenetics and we turned a rat into a stingray including a little pinch of breast implant and a pinch of gold. So I hope you enjoy hearing about the story. So I'm George Water. I'm a professor of organismic and evolutionary biology at Harvard University. In the last 10 years or so, we've been in part working on stingrays, they're quite a different platform for aquatic locomotion. They've got flattened bodies and they're uh, just a, a different style of movement than a shark or a typical fish like a trout. And that's very different than most fish that uh, swim by beating their tails back. Well, Sun Jin approached us uh, some time ago now with uh, a plan that he was working on to build a little tissue engineered robotic ray. And the question is how well that would approximate a real stingray or a real skate. Those are two very closely related species. How well his design would approximate the motion and biomechanics of live stingrays. And so it seemed like a very natural collaboration to combine his tissue engineering approach to building a, a tissue ro tissue based robotic system to uh, compare that to live animals. My name is Mal Levin, and I am a professor of applied mathematics, uh, organismic and evolutionary biology, and physics at Harvard University. And when um, I heard from uh, Matia that Sun Jin and Kit Parker were starting to think about artificially creating uh, an organism which was capable of controlled swimming but simultaneously also uh, could be steered uh, using an external uh, stimulus, uh, in this case light. Um, um, we got excited, I got excited saying can we essentially help a little bit with the spectacular problem of uh, creating a hybrid, a biohybrid. So that's how we got to see it. So beautifully done is this amalgam of a soft material coupled to um, get myocytes, but then on top of that, you built a uh, metallic structure which allowed you to essentially control how different parts are moving, and then finally, you can, opt you can optically engineer, I'm uh, sorry, genetically engineer the cells so that they were optically uh, uh, active and can be stimulated from the outside, you could also steer, so you could simultaneously solve a number of problems, you could solve the problem of explicitly building in a morphology inspired by an organism. You could explicitly control the different parts and how they were moving a little bit each other. You could control their amplitude, you could control their frequency, and then finally you could steer using an external stimulus, uh, in this case light, because the cells were opportunistically modified. <laughs> Marine life forms, with the exception of crustaceans, almost all marine life.
curvature is designed to move fluid through their body or to move their body through fluid. And if we started to understand the structure function relationships in marine life forms and how they swim, and we started to consider that maybe something in our beloved physiology textbook is wrong.